Hey guys, it's Julesy. So let's talk about Insecure season two. This is a little bit boulet because I could not get access to the screeners this year. I had access to the first half of Insecure screeners last year because at least I was on the promo list for HBO. But um, this year, I want to actually explain this a little bit because I'll explain why I didn't really do um, underground reviews this year either. Uh, funny enough, because I had a discussion with Funky Deneva who kept telling me, all I have to do is do a review of a TV show that no one else is really reviewing. Like there's not someone else like popular who is reviewing the TV show. And typically, especially for black shows who don't get as much uh, promotional help from the mainstream, that they'll reach out and like with him underground reached out and you know financially helped him out helped him to get access to the actors helped him get access to the screeners and all these other things that help him do the reviews for the show and engage his audience in a way that they want with regards to the show um and that someone would come along and do that for me and my whole thing about with him was like well you know i'm a black woman and it doesn't really work that way for us and I don't want to say that, not because I think that him being a gay man is a privilege. No, I don't see it as a privilege that people see him as a character and enjoy him as a character, even though they might not respect his humanity, versus people see me as a human and often, like, turn their nose up because I'm just a human being and, like, there's a different understanding of judgmentality of how we look at that. Girl, it's, uh, whatchamacallit, what's the word for that? Symbiotic. You know, I love Insecure enough, and I know that the engagement that I got from you guys last year is enough to come back and do it again this year because I just love the discussion that Insecure allows us to have. But it's kind of unfortunate when you don't really get any help and you know that they're working with influencers. Like, whatever, girl. It's not worth completely lamenting over, but I did want to explain it to you guys. So, you know, you can support, one, by liking this video, two, by engaging in the comments down below, three, shop Smart Brown Girl, or four, being on my Patreon. All those ways help to support the Smart Brown Girl movement. So, we are back with a bang. Ah, episodes of Insecure really are too short. You know, girl, it is a good watch. I definitely suggest watching Insecure with your homegirls, your homeboys. I just love how much discussion across just diversity of people that Insecure spawns. And I think season two is going to spawn even more now that we are moving past the fallout from Insecure, uh, insecure the fallout from Issa cheating on Lawrence. But I, I love the music overall that is featured in this episode. I especially love that I knew or recognized a lot of the songs. They opened up with the Anderson Pac, um, his collab with, I believe the kid's name is Knowledge, No Worries. Great album. I I think Issa tweeted out a Spotify playlist and I had tweeted like I just want a Spotify playlist for each episode because the music is just so good. It's so, I love all of it. Issa on the dates was enjoyable, one, because you see uh, Dustin who's on the Friend Zone podcast, King Kieran, the Instagram comedian crew, all those faces to pop up. Like people that you're familiar with that ne aren't necessarily Hollywood stars, to see them, that's like a cool connection. And then because it's like, you know, what I love is just the humanity of the show and that these are all like emotions and feelings that we go through. It might not be as dramatic, but like we cycle it through in our mind almost as dramatic. As I tweeted and they used a song from Sisters Control, Insecure is the personification of the Control album. Like, don't mess with me, I'm crazy. Like I'm a skirt skirt on whatever, whatever that I loved seeing Molly with a black woman therapist and then them talking about the importance of black women or just black therapists in general and how hard it is because if you ain't got insurance girl how you wanted a therapist and bro then you gotta go talk to those therapists that don't understand how you talk they don't understand your colloquialisms they don't understand your manners the way that you look at the world and having to like try to catch them up on speed can't really happen black therapists matter you need one i really want us to sit down and think about how we view Lawrence, who is still smashing Tasha. I mean, I, I like this is how I feel about Tasha, but I don't like I don't dislike Tasha the person. I actually feel bad for Tasha because Lawrence is hurt. He is not healed. He is not whole. He hurt and he raw dogging up in multiple beaches within a twenty four hour period. Somebody tweeted me like, "How do you know that he was raw dogging it with uh, Tasha? Cause he literally just got up and rolled over like he ain't pulled nothing off. Maybe I missed it. Maybe it was a jump cut. 
I don't know, you know, of a certain age, to be honest, most people are just, hmm, really though. And so I'm just like, it's not like, I sure they're both probably clean, but like you hopping up in between that and you know, how clean are you, how much are you washing off your, your, your wiggle wiggle, you know, give one yeast infection and the other vaginosis. Sometimes I feel some type way because I want to like Issa's character more than I like Tasha, like as in I want to like, even though I know Issa's the one who cheated and Tasha's not really in the wrong here. Um, I don't, I'm not really mad at Lawrence for sleeping with Tasha still. I'm not even really mad for him poking it in Issa like that because like, as soon as he walked in the door, I kind of knew that was going to happen, that was going to go down. Don't act like y'all don't be having y'all moments though. Like if a Negro skirt skirt on you, you wouldn't go running out in the rain to him too. It was kind of, the, and she didn't really say nothing. She didn't like buck up. She didn't even say like, yo, I'm sorry, I miss you. There was like no kind of conversation. I just really feel that Lawrence is wrong in leading Tasha on because it's obvious that Tasha has feelings and I don't feel like Tasha has a responsibility to do anything at this point because she's being forthcoming she likes to do she's being hospitable you know I as much as I want to say she's basic I like her nipple piercings Lawrence is about to hurt her the same way he's hurt I don't know whether him and Issa are going to get back together but I definitely don't think that him and Tasha are going to become a couple because you can't be a half a person and go into a relationship. It's, it just doesn't work like that. So he's setting herself, he's setting herself, he's setting Tasha up to get her feelings hurt. And I think his friend, the light skinned dude, what's his friend name? Jason or something? You know, I don't be remembering names, bruh. Talking about taking his girl on dates for cloth napkins. Call him out and pointing out that he really is using uh, uh, Tasha as a sperm depository because he hasn't even taken her on no dates. He ain't paid for nothing. She letting a Negro stay up at her house, eat her food, have free access to her coochie. I mean, she getting her back blown out I, from the side. He's not really giving her what she deserve. Does she deserve? I mean, we, we got to respect all black women, right? I love Issa's little ad libs where she's like freestyling. When she was freestyling on the dates and when she's at the mailbox and the old lady yelled out, get out of my mail! <laughs> and she was saying because Lawrence got the jury duty notice and she's like, oh, he got to get his mail or he going to go to jail. Eh. So she has a reason to see it. These are just such human feelings. Like I've never cheated on somebody, but I have definitely been in a situation where things have gone sour with the guy and then you're, you're, you're setting it up in your mind what it's going to be like the next time you see him, even though you just want to see them. And so, like, you're setting up all these scenarios of how it's going to go. Um, and that was, like, a really authentic moment. Uh, everything else, I think, you know, it's the first episode. There, it was, it was, it was a really good first episode because a lot of times the first episode is just kind of, like, the entry point. Like, we're catching up and connecting all the dots from last season. But they really went in with a bang. Like, that 30 second three pumps and dumps. It was it was it, it was literally a 30 second boom boom bap. I I personally I personally am not a fan of four playlist sex. So I I just don't maybe there there's a few things I would have changed in there. I just feel like me, I would in my head, in my head, even though Issa was in her head about how that situation was gonna go and it went nothing like she had it in her mind. So I'm acknowledging the fact that like maybe in my head I have way more confidence than I would when my emotions are tied up with somebody. Um, but that we, there would have just been more conversation. There would have been more lead up. It just wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm soaking wet. Stick it in me. But then again, you know, we've all had our moments. So let me not lie to myself. I want to blast Lawrence as a bad guy. But I absolutely do not think that that is fair to the matter at hand. And I'm hoping that Lawrence has good enough friends to talk some sense into him about him not emotionally using and abusing everyone just because he got his feelings hurt. What do you think is going to happen this season with Lawrence and Issa? Do you think they're going to get back together? Do you think Tasha's going to come out on top? What I do know is that clearly Issa Rae is going to end up Insta stalking Tasha and Tasha got some perky ass titties on nice little booty. It's gonna be like Scissor's Garden. 
that verse all over the place i don't know it's just the first episode it's like how do we you have all these feelings about lawrence and his actions and isa and lawrence and isa lawrence and tasha and the storyline it's like okay i'm waiting for them to develop a little bit more with what's going to happen with yvonne and that whole knowing the white boy gets paid more than her and i think we only know that more so from the previews that we do from the actual episode because like how much more is he getting paid than her how is she going to approach the partners at the firm because molly is about her job and i hope this is a really good moment that teaches us a lot about how we as black women walk through the corporate world and how we have the right to have more confidence and speak up you know closed mouths don't get fed so we ain't gonna keep our mouths closed i hope that's what happened this season let me know what your thoughts are about going forward in season two what was your favorite song that was played on this episode i'm gonna try and get video reviews and blog post up. I'm not gonna have a blog post up for today because I have a flight in like three hours and it's just not gonna happen at this point because I couldn't get them screeners, girl. But going forward, I'm gonna get, try and get that done and I'm gonna try definitely this year. I do not wanna be saying, I'm sorry it's so late. You know, like I'm trying to get these things up, these suckers up on a Monday, on a good day for you guys. All right, deuces.